Hello there and welcome to Live Music and Me, a series of music podcasts where we get some of our friends to come on and talk about their gig memories. Today's guest is the singer, songwriter, performer and total Scottish legend, Faye Fife. I'm sure you'll enjoy this one. All the best now. Faye, hello there, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, yes, 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 yes. Welcome to my kitchen come demo studio <laughs> here. <laughs> Thanks for inviting us. Thanks for inviting us. Are you are you ready to have a go at live music in me? Uh yes, of course. Yeah, of course. good stuff. We'll see how your your memory's doing on a Monday morning, will we? Yeah. Yeah, go on then. Go on mm. then. Right, okay, let's fire off. Um so the first question was the first gig that you went to. Well, um I I I, I have a special thing there because I used to work at the Kinema Ballroom cleaning tables from when I was really young, from when I was 14. So I saw a lot of gigs really early. Right. And um, I didn't necessarily choose to go and see them, they just came at me sort of thing. And um, that was a fantastic education and a real privilege actually. So the first first gigs I saw there were uh, the Alex Harvey Band oh, uh, okay. and um, Andy Fairweather Low. They're a bit different. Yeah, they're both, yeah. They're both, um, they were both great. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I can imagine. And did, did you know the bands at the time, or did they just turn up, or...? No, know? I know nothing about them. Oh. I was really, really keen on music, but I never knew. They were outside of... No, I'd heard... No, that's not true. I'd, I'd heard um, Andy Fairweather Lowe's stuff, but I hadn't heard um, I hadn't heard the Alex Harvey band. Yeah. But, but I hadn't been used to the idea of seeing things live, either. But um, they both really struck me as being both really good in their own ways, yeah. Yeah, that's a good start, like that. And I yeah, guess quite quite, start, yeah. quite memorable, Alex Harvey, I'm guessing. It was, they were both as memorable as each really? other. Right. You know, they, I, I had never heard of the Alex Harvey band. I was into soul music and uh, David Bowie. And so I don't really didn't know them, but um, but it really, um, it really struck me as something. Like I could hear all the instruments on their own and I'd never heard that before. I became, it was like an education because I watched them at the sound check and I became aware, oh, that's the bass and that's the guitar. Yeah. And the drum was before I'd listened to records, you were hearing it all as I'm on, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Magic. That's a great answer. Thank you. Okay. And fast forward, what was the last gig that you went to? The last gig that I went to? Well, it was actually the uh, Filthy Tongues and Scorpio Leisure. Excellent. Where, where was that? That was at Cabaret Voltaire, ah. the same place that the Countess played on on Friday. Countess played Friday night, and they were very good too. Thank you. Um, oh, that's cracking! I've saw Filthy Tongues, I saw them or more, but um, but no, I didn't get to that one. Was it good? Would be good, I guess, would it? It yeah. was really good, but um, it was actually a bit overpacked, and so that was too, it was too packed for the size of the venue. You see, it's pretty small. Yeah. And um, so that was kind of like me. Oh. Yeah, I mean, they've just sort of really started opening that place up. So that was a very early gig. So I think they've got it a bit more run smoothly. But it was too packed for the size of the thing. But the, but the band were really great. And yeah. so it's called Scorpio Leisure. Really good Scorpio Leisure. Yeah, they're on yeah. last night from Glasgow, aren't they? Uh -huh. um, yeah, yeah, really good. Like them. Okay, cracking. Really good. Um, what about uh, the gig that you travelled the furthest to get to? Um. Do you know, I've always just been places and seen things, you know, because I travel yeah. around a lot. So, I mean, I've, obviously I've seen quite a lot in in London and such. Like, did I travel? I think I might have gone to London or Manchester to see when the Sex Pistols was reformed one of the times. Yeah. Um, I think I did, but I was like, I think I was visiting a pal at the same time. I wouldn't, I'm not, I wouldn't, I suppose because I don't, I'm not a civilian, as it were. I don't really do that. I don't really sort of. Um, yeah. I don't sort of travel around to shows. Really, I just when I'm in places, I really try and see see things. You know. Right. Um. I did. I did, You know. I did see. I did see James Brown in Manchester and things like that. But I think I was playing near. But I've travelled right. as far as you know. It's, I travelled to Manchester, sort of thing. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about um, first gig with a partner? It's like a gig date. A gig date. With a partner, it was uh, Dr. Feelgood. Excellent. Where was mm -hmm. that? When? Where? Where? Uh, when and where? Yeah. It was in Edinburgh and it was 1975, maybe. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how did the how did the night go? Oh, yeah, it was fantastic because yeah. um, I was really, really impressed by Lee Brillo. Mm. Uh, I was impressed by the whole band, but it's like really seedy. 
cream jacket and things like that. That was very inspirational. And, uh, you know, the fact that the drummer was called the big figure. But, <laughs> you know, um, uh, Dr. Feelgood was a real inspiration for, for um, the Rosillos. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, yeah. So uh, just the whole, like, complete raw down home approach. And, like, the, the minute, the minute um, they start playing live or the minute you hear the records or the, you know, be... You know, certainly their early records, it's like, oh, my God, that's really grabs you. You know, they've got such yeah. a great rhythm section. Yeah, and quite very distinctive as well, weren't they? Very distinctive, yeah. Yeah, and how did the date go? Was it all right? The date? Um... <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to answer that. Yeah, no, I've always just so focused on music that dates seem peripheral. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have, moving on quickly. Um, drawing a veil, drawing a veil, drawing a veil, exactly. Um, <coughs> different times. What about a, a bucket gig in the past that you wish you'd got to? A gig that I wished I'd got to. Mm. Well, there are people that are sadly passed away that I've missed seeing, and you know I was taking it for granted that I was going to see them because I've seen loads of my heroes and heroines. You know, mm. I've made a point of it, but I didn't see Prince before he passed. Right, and I did okay. Glenn Campbell before he passed, and that that's regrettable. So now I'm thinking, you know, I've really got to see people like Willie Nelson and whatever. Not that yeah. I think he's going to pop his clogs anytime soon, but he's he's a good age and, and yeah, uh, very um, good. yeah, lots of people like that, the older people. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I think that's I think that's a sort of message to us all: see live music, don't take it for granted in any way, because the people might stop doing it for one yeah. reason. You couldn't know? agree. Couldn't agree more yeah. with you. I was I was lucky enough to see Prince, but um, yeah, it was a while ago now, and he was a force of nature. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 amazing. And you know, the the last gig he played, he ended up playing two gigs on the one night because he cancelled that gig because of kind of health reasons. Um, right. And he rearranged it for like two nights later, and all of those guys came to the gig that was cancelled, and he then played the next gig after it. If that makes sense, both on one night. Really, um, really. Yeah, played to like three in the morning or something like that, which yeah. no doubt, no doubt, wasn't great for his health, you know. But no, uh, but he, he, I think he always liked to do that. Once he started playing, he just kept on. I mean, I get that, you know. It takes you so long to come down from that, I from a really from playing a really good gig that you may as well just keep playing, you know. <laughs> I, I get it entirely. You just want to keep that. Keep it going. And, and talking about special gigs, what about a gig that maybe most surprised you, like good or bad? You went to one and you weren't sure about it and. You came away thinking, actually, that, that was cracking. Um, well, I had no expectations, but when I, I saw the cramps very early in New York and I was just mm -hmm. completely knocked out. So that, that was a real surprise. I thought, this is like life-changing experience. Yeah. I had no expectations at all. And then you played, that was when, when I was in New York and with the Rosillos, and um, they played quite a lot of CBGB, so we just went to see them a lot. And oh, God, they were so brilliant. And Lux and Tira was such an amazing front person, you know. Would that be kind of original cramps, if that makes sense? That was kind of quite early on, yeah. Very early. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and was that all part of the CBGBs thing? Was the cramps sort of coming on to the end of the Ramones and Bondi and? Well, they played. Uh, well, they were playing there a lot. Yeah, no, they yeah. were very much part of the scene. I mean, uh, I there are such a short hair there that was that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> did you have did you have a, a, a gig for a, a sort of famous ticket uh, sorry a ticket for a great gig that you couldn't get to was there something that you always you were planning to go to and something happened that you never got well I was actually just thinking about this the other day actually I had tickets to go to the I was given guest tickets to go to the Isle of Wight festival and the stones were on I've seen the stones and various other people and that would have been really nice to go to but my Boy was we at the time, he was about six or seven. I thought, this is so complicated. I just, <laughs> oh, I, can't, I just can't do it. Like the sort of child care things and everything. Oh, God. But now I'm thinking, I should have done it. Take the yeah. chances to see these things, you know? Yeah, absolutely. But you say you've saw the stones anyway, right? I have, yeah. I'm yeah. selling at Murrayfield, actually. Since Murrayfield has been in the news this week. Yeah. Uh, just, indeed um, it has, yeah. Very Cheryl, popular this week. Cheryl Cole was supporting them, and yeah, they were, they were great, yeah. Cheryl Cole was supporting? Cheryl Crow, yeah. Oh, oh Cheryl Crow, I thought you said Cheryl Cole. No, Cheryl Cole. <laughs> That's quite, that was surprising. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was oh, fantastic. Uh, any gig that made you miss the last bus or train home? Mm. Or plane? Or... 
you know there have been many occasions when I was a teenager um I, well I grew up in Fife and from Fermanagh mm -hmm. and um used to go out um when I was a bit older I started coming to Edinburgh but even before that I used to go to Glasgow mm -hmm. and um I was always missing the last train in the last <laughs> And even when I was a bit slightly older than but I can't even remember what I was seeing or what I was doing. I can't that I was missing things. But I remember um yeah, in the early days of the Rosillos, I went to see something. I can't say what it was, but I did miss the last bus or train home. I had to walk all the way home. But that was from Glasgow to Edinburgh. You had to I walk home? I had to walk home. I did it, yeah. What's <laughs> no, you, that's not possible. That's like 40 it is miles. Possible. It is possible. Yeah, yeah, it is possible. I don't know, right? Just keep on going. Uh, were you on your own? Yeah. It's a bit of a daft thing to do, really. But it's yeah, I, mean, I, I, I have walked a fair way to get home from gigs, but I never walked 40 miles. I think it's more than 40. I think it's coming on for 50, actually. Is it? Or 45. So I don't know. Anyway, it's a long way. But yeah, there are there have been several occasions of missing things. Yeah. When we're, but when, 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 you're, when um, you're young and extremely bold, then you don't really mind, do you? No, that's the whole point, I think, isn't yes, it? it is. It is, yeah. yeah, it's, it's living the moment, go to the gig, mm -hmm. and deal, yeah. deal with the consequences of it after yeah, that, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's it. I think that's it. I don't know if I've got a question about the the longest walk home from a gig, but that's absolutely that's one that hands down. Yeah, yeah. But I can't even remember who I saw. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember what it was, but I, mean, uh, I don't see. Was it worth that. it? Yeah, oh, it must oh. be worth it. I'm sure. Oh. Mm, don't know. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about the best support act? That you've ever seen? Oh, um, um, Kid Congo and the Pink Monkey Birds. Okay, where was, they that? Where was that? The, they supported the Rosillos in America, and we okay. toured all around the place. And um, you know, Kid, Con Kid Congo is a pal, and I've done some work with him as well, with him and yeah. Martin. And um, but this was before all that, and um, yeah, it, they were just great. They were just great, and I used to. I just used to come out and just watch them before before we went on because out of you know this is really great to watch. Whereas um, some sometimes I watch sport bands or sometimes I just have a kick at them. But sometimes I'm going and I'm sitting in the dressing room going oh <laughs> no, but no they were really great. I remember Ken McCluskey told a story about playing in Edinburgh and Aztec Camera were playing on the bill at the time and it was like kind of shared bill. And yeah. they were waiting to play and Roddy Frame, the guys came out and started knocking out all their tunes. And he says they were all sitting with their head bless you, says they were sitting with their heads in their hands, saying what really? what, what, what are we doing? You know, this this yeah. that, yeah. <laughs> and they we can't go out there, you know, it's like guys like years ahead of us. So um, yeah. but they said it was very inspiring because of course he was about yeah. the same age. So it was that yeah. whole motivation to, to kind of step your game up and, and do more. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Okay. As a performer, then this is a tough one for you. What about the favourite gig you've performed at, and why? Um. Well, of course, I've done a million shows. You know. You have. Uh, um, we'll give you a couple if it's too hard to give us one. I'll give you. I'll, I'll give you a couple. Well, of course, you know, people know me from being in the Rosillos. Mm -hmm. And the Revillos, but I also but I have a ba another band as well, which you know because you just saw us on Friday, which is the Countess of Faith. Mm -hmm. So there's quite a lot to choose from. I would say this: go back to the Revillos time. We played at the Peppermint Lounge, and um, right. that was like such an experience. And I, I think we'd been on a long tour, and I was like just bonkers on stage. <laughs> and um, I've written a song actually for the next Revillos album, and it's. It's about that actually. Okay. It's about, it's about being that age and being there. And it's um it's either called Peppermint Lounge or Peppermint Girl, but that 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 was a great gig. Okay. And then the the Revillos also did the Ritz in New York. That was a York. fantastic gig. Yeah. The Revillos did um a fantastic I've done one or two fantastic gigs. The, the, the Apollo, when going back way back before we broke up the first time, that was a great amazing gig. Did you support the Ramones at the Apollo? Yeah, but we did a gig on our own as well. Yeah, we, it's just one of the other guys gave it, I think, is his favourite gig. Right, right. Was Ramones and Rosillo's supporting. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like way back. We did, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, the headline one that we did there, that was good. That was when the Rosillo's were breaking up. I think we got something like 13 encores. It was absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, there should have been a message there, like, don't break up. Um, <laughs> but then, 
more, more recently. Well, you're going to think this is crazy, really, because you were there, but actually the gig on Friday was one of my favourite gigs. That was the Countess of Fife at the Cabaret Voltaire. Yeah, and, what, and it, was, it was wonderful. So why, why do you think it was so good for you? Yeah, I was going to say that one, and also we did one at Celtic Connections or on more. That was also one of my favourite gigs. Why? Because um, the Countess of Fife are coming to a bit of a musical fruition. I mean, it's really, um, it's so, it's developing so well, and the sound is developing well, and it's still developing, keep on developing. Mm. Um, it also has, we've also had, have quite a lot of new songs in the set, plus the, plus the album from, plus the music from Star of the Sea. And um, it's very, uh, it's creatively satisfying because I know that we're getting the sound that I want us to get and it's, it's going creatively somewhere I want us to go to. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was a great gig to be at, so Thank we'll you. absolutely give you that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so take it a bit bigger then, what about the best music festival? that you've been to, either playing or, or watching? God, I went with the, the Rizillos played at one, it's where there's a something, Goodwood Vintage, I think it was called. That was such a great, uh, it's where Goodwood is. Where the, went the race course and stuff. Yeah, but they had a, yeah. They had, yeah, but they had a festival on, I don't know if they still have that on. It was such a good vibe and that was quite a wee while ago. And I actually managed to relax and enjoy the festival. It's not a lot of times I don't, you know? Yeah. Um, so I did, and that was really good, and there were some really great acts on. I remember there was some some obscure Northern Soul things that had been plucked from obscurity that were playing really good. And then the other thing was another thing. Yeah, um, what was that festival they had on the border? Wicker Man. Wicker Man, yeah. Yeah, that, that, I mean, these things I've played at, and I've, I, you know, I've managed to catch some acts and things like that. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, and as, as I've gone on and as I've got older, I'm trying really hard to um to actually make sure i see see as many other things as i can so don't just turn up and go Bleh, and then disappear you know what i mean yeah so let me ask you that i asked you about a, a bucket gig in the past that you you'd wish you'd saw and so sort of moving that forward then is there any one or or any band that you you're thinking i'm going to go and see them before i before i can't before you, I can't. you mentioned willie nelson i think earlier on Willie Nelson, I will be going to yeah. see. Now, um, a, 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 a singer that I think is the most fantastic singer is Bonnie Reid. And okay. I love her. Yeah. And I still haven't seen her. No, and you're like, me neither. Her, something came up and I didn't go and see her. Da, 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 I had to go, I have to see Bonnie Reid. Um, yeah, and I, and I have to see Willie Nelson. Um, yeah, I think they're my main two, actually, at the moment. I've seen so many people that I, that I really... That I really love that are my heroes and heroes, but there will be a few more to come up. And we'll have see. you been to like um, Nashville festivals or South by Southwest and stuff? Have you done that? Yes, I've been. I've been the Rizillos did South by Southwest. Right. That was good. It's good. It was chaotic, and bizarre, and funny. I yeah. think that would be a while ago. I think it's it's much more sort of corporate now. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, also, uh, a, a wee while ago, I had a project with uh, Martin Metcalf, and we knew we were booked to go to South by Southwest, and then the pandemic happened, so oh. I did not went again. But um, I would love to go there with Countess of Faith. Yeah, sure. it's perfect, mm -hmm. perfect fit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect fit. Okay, then. Um, Couple to finish. So the band or the artist that you've saw the most? Um apart from your own bands. Yeah, yeah. That would be Kid Congo and the Pink Monkey Birds. Okay. That although it's slightly accidental because he as he was they, they were supporting us on an American tour, but I watched them tons. And I've seen them loads of times. I see I make a point in seeing them. They played Glasgow recently. Mm. That's right. The voodoo rooms in Edinburgh a few times. If I'm here, I'll be there, you know. Okay. Cool. Um, favourite live music venue? I love the voodoo rooms, actually. Voodoo rooms? It's, yeah, I love the voodoo rooms. Because? It's sophisticated. It's got a lovely sound. It's not too many. It's not got, not got too many people, so it's not a sort of like too rama lama. You know, it's got, it's got a lovely bar in it. And you can do shows in there, but you can do sit-down shows as well as stand-up. And I, I particularly enjoy that. Okay. I don't want to be standing on. I can't see. Oh, I'm quite tall. That's a really tall person for me. So I like that. Yeah. I'm imagining you'd get some space at a gig, Faye. I don't. I don't see people crowding you out if there's. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they'd have the nerve, you know. Yeah. Well, we'll see. <laughs> 
You mentioned about uh, your your sort of favourite gigs, a performer, favourite gig to have watched. You mentioned a few, but which oh. one would you would you sort of stick in your head as the best one? Right. Well, I haven't mentioned. Um, I did mention briefly, but you know the great gigs I've seen. I would say this, and there's no order of preference. Okay. James Brown, mm -hmm. The Crafts, Kid Congo, and the Monkey Birds. Um. Where did you see James Brown? Manchester. Manchester. Well, you mentioned that, right? Wait, he was old at the time. Mm. It was amazing. Um, was he still dropping to his knees and stuff, or was that all? No, he wasn't no. dropping to his knees. No. I had a, it was interesting. I had a conversation with um, a pal of mine, and he goes, "Yeah, well, how long are you going?" He said, "How long are you going to go and do this?" You know, I don't want you to say you're getting all. You know, I said, "I'll do this as long as the music is good and as long as I have an audience. And if I don't feel it's good, then I won't do it. Okay. You know, but I'll do it as long as that." He said, "Well, you don't want to be sort of like losing." You know, not doing what the stuff you could do when you were young. I said, I'm already not doing the stuff. You know, <laughs> True. I'm doing other stuff. You know, I'm singing better and things like that. And I've got a much more musical deck. But um, and I said, and I used that as an example. I said, I went to see James Brown. Obviously, he wasn't jumping around like he was when he was thirty, but um, he stayed quite still. And um, the music was extremely powerful. His voice was phenomenal, and the mm. band was knockout. Yeah, I mean, at Sinatra and Bowie and guys all changed, didn't they? But they, they were no less performers yeah. at the end than they were when they were young. They just adapted. And you just, and you just you know? have to hope that your audience is going to grow up with you and allow you to grow up, you know? Well, I'd hope so, because we all get older too, don't we? That's that's how it works, I think. Yeah, yeah, apparently. Okay, then, and to finish, um, one live album that you think everyone should own a copy of? Oh, James Brown. Live at Apollo. Live at Apollo. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. That is, the, that is amazing. But I've heard it so much, I never need to live in, I never need to listen to it again. I also think, um, I also think uh, Dr. Feelgood, is it Stupidity, the live one? Yeah, yeah. That's a great album too. Yeah, mm. someone else has called that one out. I think when the James Brown's been called out as well, and I think they mentioned Sam Cooke at the Harlem Club. Oh, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, which is kind of similar, isn't it, in feel? It's that kind yeah. of sweaty, yeah. full-on thing. It's um, cool. yeah. Just, just mm. the way we like it. Yeah. Just the way we like it. Okay, that's magic. We've managed to rattle through those. I hope that wasn't too painful for you. It wasn't in any way painful. It was a delight. <laughs> uh, well, really, I'm sorry it took so long for me to, <laughs> to get all. there. Bad organiser. Anyway, uh, yeah. we're, we're delighted we managed to get you. And uh, and the Countess of Ice stuff's going great. So, you know, good luck with the gigs. I know you're playing over the summer, Kirkcaldy and Belladon. Yeah, I'm playing Kirkcaldy. I think it's 22nd this month. Or is it 20, 21st? Or, yeah, so. 22nd, yeah. We're playing the Flames on the 14th of August, I think that'll be a good one. And yeah. many other things besides, including Belladon Festival. Yeah. I also, so, I think you're playing the Hope and Anchor. Yes. Yeah. I, one. I lived across the road from Hope and Anchor. That's a vibey place to stay. You must have to see a lot of shows. I, I did. I mean, it was post 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 punk, if that makes sense, it was a bit later yeah. down the line, but it was still gigging, and um, yeah, great place to live. To be fair, it's magic. Too expensive yeah. for me, I couldn't stay there. No, it would be too expensive. Some of my great, some of my favourite restaurants are around there. Yeah, and things Upper like. Sea's wonderful. It's a great place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So good luck with that. Good luck with the new album, obviously, uh, and the uh, results as well, which I believe we've got something in the pipeline for. Something in the pipeline. Uh, everything's in the pipeline. I've, I've got a feeling that the. Kentus of Fife will be going down a slightly faster pipe than the Rosillos who really like to take their time about things. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sure expect, that, expect the next Kentus album before, before the Rosillos one, I think. I, I'm sure they'll be both worth the wait. Um, Faith okay. Fife, thank you very much for your time. All right, thank you. I'm just going to scoot now, okay? Take care. Okay. All, all the best. Cheers now. Bye-bye. All the best now. See you. Bye. Bye.